Arkea's veteran opposition leader, Riley Odinga, has called for weekly protests as clashes erupted between police and supporters demonstrating of the country's cost of living crisis. Odinga told crowds of chanting followers in Nairobi that there will be strikes and demonstrations every Monday, adding that it will not end until Kenyans get their rights. <laughs> And I let our scary and I pick our two way to and I shake our two way to and I bunja katiba na sharia to them stucky to them stucky to the ICC. So they are in the Pani Mwanzo Mambo 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 Tena Jumata to enjoy. Tumatatu ijayo, tuko na tuko na manda mando. Sasawa, chile jumata. Now join us to discuss this is uh, Dr. Uh, Nancy Omolo, a Kenyan political analyst. Uh, one welcome to you, Dr. Omolo, and thanks for joining us at NC Continental Prime. Uh, can you kindly uh, mute your device, uh, Dr. Omolo? Now, Dr. Omolo, the leader of the Azimio coalition, Raila Odinga, rallied supporters to engage in peaceful protests. Uh, the government thinks it's unnecessary and that the protests have all two motives. Uh, the opposition disagrees with the government's position. What's your assessment of this protest? Uh, we, we're still having problems with your audio. Could you kindly unmute your device, please? Oh, thank you so much for inviting me to your station. Oh, so this uh, protest, uh, they call it uh, Date with the Destiny. It was uh, announced two weeks ago. But up to yesterday, there was a lot of confusion whether it was going to take place or not, because the police said that uh, they were informed quite late, uh, a day before. They needed to be informed around uh, maybe three days prior, which uh, the constitution just wants you to notify the police. And also a day before, the university students who gave uh, a briefing uh, a media briefing were also arrested the day before. So a day before, actually there was an uncertainty whether this uh, event was going to take place. But Raila Odinga actually said yesterday evening that they, if they protest, they, they're going to continue with the protest as they had planned. So waking up this morning, there were police all over the town. There were the military also in the city. So I think this actually... Uh, created that stage uh, for confrontation between the citizen and the police because the politicians who are walking to the city were not armed. Uh, the citizen, when they walked in the city, they were not armed. But eventually they were th uh, stone throwing. Uh, as you said, uh, some politicians were arrested. So, and the constitution of Kenya allowed for demonstration and also allowed for uh, picketing. But uh, beyond that, uh, the demonstration went on. Uh, many, uh, the, today, the whole of the central business was all closed down. There was no business happening. And as the deputy president said, that Kenya lost around $2 billion. That's around US dollars, 15.4 million Kenya shillings. And one of the things you ask, how is this going to be sustainable? Because uh, Raila Odinga says that uh, we're going to have this demonstration on every Monday till uh, the government act on their demands. And one of their demands is the high cost of living in the country. Uh, the second one is the constitution of the independent electoral boundaries and commission. And the third one, they want the opening of the servers and the audit of the IB servers because uh, Raila Odinga says that uh, he has a, a report, a whistleblower report, which actually says that he won the election and Ruto did not win the election. So that's the situation that Kenyans find themselves in and uh, the church leaders and other leaders within the country have uh, said that, you know, there's no way out of this uh, apart from dialogue. So everyone is talking that we need a dialogue because uh, we cannot continue being in this situation. Now, Dr. Omolo, uh, these protests was targeted peaceful protests. Uh, but there's been reports, reports of hiccups, police using uh, tear gas and water cannons and protesters, notably uh, Rilo Dinka's convoy. What's your reaction uh, to that, did the police overstep its boundaries? 
I think the police has to work within uh, the the law and also within the constitution because uh, you know we had the water cannons uh, you know on the street and this is water cannon should be used maybe like uh, in a military contest and actually one of uh, the leaders said that you know when I saw all this water being wasted on the street and I'm a pastoralist I thought can I have that water to go and give to my cows so and also we saw the police uh, throwing canisters at the protesters so I think there was provocation what the police was supposed to do was to provide security and one of the things that uh, you know we're asking what about if the the police woke up this morning and the police was just standing there and providing security and allowed Mr. Odinga to go and address uh, the demonstrators at KCC. So we're asking, could it have taken a shorter time or could we have had lesser uh, destruction? Because when you have all these people demonstrating in the city, then you also have some criminal elements which join the team. So we had a bit of some buildings stoned. We, in Kisumu, we had some two cars uh, burnt and also the destruction of the UDA office, uh, the political office. So, you know, if we had the police providing protection and they allow the opposition to do the demonstration, maybe we'd have less of a destruction of property. But they need to ask, uh, uh, act within the law. And we also need to really redefine how do we handle demonstration? Because when I saw the South African demonstration, I think there was less of police and military interference. Now, Dr. Omano, um, earlier when you were making your submission, you did uh, talk about the adverse effects of the Kenyan economy running into billions of dollars. Now, Kenya's airways has suspended operations and some uh, economic activities must have stalled. How do you see the government responding to the demands of these protesters? Because uh, I'm not sure the cost of leaving could uh, disappear or go down uh, overnight. Kenya operates a free market economy. So is there a chance for this protest? Uh, what, what's the sustainability? Uh, how do you sustain this protest? Uh, I think it's not sustainable, but from what we've seen from the opposition, the opposition are able to sustain those uh, demonstrations on every Monday the way they've said, uh, they've said for it. But uh, the cost to the economy is really enormous. As you said, $2 billion, which is equivalent to 15.4 billion. We had the embassies, uh, the international embassy, uh, advising their people not to visit Kenya, and Kenya really relies on uh, tourism that at the moment is not safe. We had children stay at home. Children did not go to school. And one of the things that Mr. Odinga said is like he had declared a holiday in the country. And from what we have seen, basically we had a holiday in this country. And also you have the casual workers who work on casual basis and uh, who are at the bottom of the economy. If they don't work and the industries are closed, then they're not paid. So this situation is not really, uh, you cannot sustain it. And as the airlines, there were no airlines, uh, you know, flights from Nairobi to Kisumu or Mombasa, the buses could not operate. So basically it's very unsustainable. And uh, the only thing out of it is dialogue. But also Raila Odinga supporters are saying that they don't want handshake. So they want Ruta to get out of state house and they want Raila to get in. But we are, we are also operating within the legal basis whereby um, uh, President Ruta had already been sworn in. So the, the, riots, the, the people who are rioting or are, are doing the protest, actually they believe that through mass action, they can get President Ruta out of the office. And actually during this demonstration, you had them say that Ruta must go, Ruta must go. So if this situation continues, even at, certain, at some point, even uh, Raila will not be able to control the crowd because the crowd are already psyched. They want, they want a handshake. They, what they want is they want the presidency, which was stolen from them and needs to be handed over to them. And the cost of living is also so high. And also when you saw the police handling this situation like this, Ruto came on a platform of the hustler. The hustler meant that the economy was bottom up to the people at the bottom. But when you saw the police throwing canisters, the police using the water cannon, actually they're using this these things on the people who are called hustlers. But beyond this, again, when you see uh, just last week, uh, President Ruto actually elected the cabinet assistant secretaries, a position of uh, 40, uh, we had in the uh, under Kenyatta presidency, we had 23. Under him, He's already increased 27 uh, of those uh, positions and people are saying that you need to be sensitive to the economy. Quite a lot yeah. to discuss, uh, Dr. Uh, Nancy Omolo, when it comes to politics in Kenya. And of course, our radar will still be there because the situation is brewing. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, quite a peculiar one after the Supreme Court has decided that President Ruto is the legitimate president 
and we're having this demonstration. Thank you very much uh, for your time and insights, Dr. Uh, Nancy Amolo. Thank you so much.